Welcome to Hockey Night in New York, where Islanders hockey is always top shelf. Whether you got your start as a dynasty veteran, a Millbury survivor, or you were born into the Church of Trots, Hockey Night in New York is your home for all things Isles. Now, here are your eclectic hosts, Sean Cuthbert and Christian Arnold. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Hockey Night in New York. Welcome to the program, everyone, and welcome to the Long Island Marriott here in Uniondale next to the Nassau Coliseum, the Old Barn. Another edition of the Indoor Tailgate here at the Long Island Marriott. I want to welcome Drive for Five and Isles Fanatics in the house hanging out to watch some Islander hockey. Isles vs. Capitals. We're also raising money for the Long Island Rough Riders sled hockey. Lots of fun in store here. Thanks for coming down and hanging with us. And hello to everybody tuning in live on the Twitch. We got Tony Stabile joining us, old time host. We got Mr. Scott Charles of the Associated Press joining us as well. My name is Sean Cuthbert. With me as always is Mr. Christian Arnold. Christian, how are you? I'm well, Sean. How can I be bad when we're here live at the Long Island Marriott for an exciting... And I don't mean that sarcastically, because <laughs> totally this game is going to be exciting. Battle between the Islanders and Washington Capitals. I'm glad you had to clarify that. People know you enough that uh, the, the sarcasm filter isn't always I clear. I mean, I'm being very sarcastic. I hear there's a very, very meaningful Ranger Carolina game on tonight as well. Oh, is that right? Yeah. For the, I hear for the there's Metro a lot title. more implication for that one. So we got a lot of fun <laughs> coming up. <laughs> a lot of fun in store for you. We got uh, our pals Dennis and Sam from the Islanders repping. They're going to be doing some Islanders trivia Love during that. the intermissions. Thanks. They're going to have some Islander memorabilia prizes. It's going to be great stuff. We also have some autograph helmets that are going to be auctioned off. Going towards, proceeds going towards the Long Island Rough Riders sled hockey. Also going to have a presentation from Drive for Five later on during the intermissions. Plenty of stuff going on. Also going to have some great raffle prizes as well. You can see the Long Island Rough Riders sled hockey table for more information on the raffles and prizes going to be a great night and I want to remind everybody that we are proud to be sponsored by RJ Daniels American Bar and Grill located at 279A Sunrise Highway in Rockville Center. The best place to catch the Isles and you can't be at the game. Head on down for great food and drink specials, Bunny of TVs, and in-game sound. Also sponsored by Blue Line Deli and Bagels located at 719 West Jericho Turnpike in Huntington 217 Carlton Avenue in East Islip and UBS Arena at Belmont, check out their menu at bluelinedeli.com. Also happy to be sponsored by Thai Technology, a voice over IP company providing phone services for businesses across the country. Check them out at thaitechnology.com. And of course, sponsored by Oyster Bay Brewing Company, creator of the Barn Rocker Session Ale. Available at 12 locations at the Islanders' brand new home in UBS Arena and even more distributors across the country from coast to coast. And for those of you tuning in at twitch.tv slash hockey night, and why? Remember to get your questions in for our questions brewing segment brought to you by Oyster Bay Brewing Company. So with all of the pleasantries out of the way, Christian Arnold, since the last time we did this here show, yes. the Islanders have been on a five game losing streak. It's because we haven't done broadcast. the show. Maybe that's what I it think is. That's the key. There's got to be a show, a and then they show? start winning. <laughs> well, a daily show. <laughs> if we daily can find show, the time, we'd be we'd be playing in the cup parade. Not this sure. Point, I guess. Not sure that's in the cards, but uh, <laughs> also, which happened since the the last time we did the show, they were unfortunately mathematically eliminated from playoff contention in I mean, their loss to the Leafs. I mean, we knew it was coming, but now it's official. But we could dream for for a week and a half. Sure. We'll let Chris Bada believe that uh, <laughs> the impossible could happen. But either way, Christian, we're here to have some fun tonight. We got plenty of great people in the house here. Still going to have a lot of fun watching Isles vs. Yes. Capitals. So lots of fun in store. What do you say, CA? Yeah, I mean, listen, this is, uh, you know, I was reading a couple things coming into the show tonight. One thing that kind of stood out was a, uh, a story, I was believe it was by Ethan Sears from the New York Post, about the Islanders trying to just close out the season on a positive note. And obviously the last couple games they haven't done that and then playing for pride. I thought it was interesting, one of the quotes that – was in the story was from, from Matt Martin, who obviously bleeds orange and blue. He's as diehard an Islander as, as Bobby Nystrom or Mike Bossy or any of those guys because, you know, he is as true an Islander as they come. And, um, you know, for him to kind of say that they haven't been living up to that expectation of, 
of at least playing for pride and putting on that jersey and, and playing out the season with respect kind of kind of was interesting. And I think it's telling to the mindset still in that locker room that, listen, these guys still care and they still want to win despite where they are in the standing, despite the fact that in, uh, in, a, in a week or so that uh, they'll be headed for the golf course and not the playoffs. Hey, look, I mean, you can go around the fan base and, and everybody. There's obviously a lot of disappointment, but nobody's more disappointed than the guys that are in that locker room. Oh, 100%. Room. And 100%. you talk about pride. It's not just about that, but, you know, not only do, do the pundits put expectations on these guys, but they do themselves. And yeah. they saw what they did the last couple of years. They, they came a shorthanded goal away yeah. from going to the Stanley Cup Finals. We all know that. And they had even higher expectations for this year. It didn't go their way. And, look, you use terms like playing out the string or whatnot, which is essentially what they're doing. But at yeah. the same time, you know, they're not mailing it in. You no. know, these guys are still playing literally for that pride. <laughs> they want to get wins on the table. And, and, you know, we talked about nobody wants to be a spoiler in previous shows. But, look, they're still going to show up and give their best game. So that's what these guys are doing out there. They're going to do it tonight against the Capitals. Maybe they ruin a three seed for them in the Metro. I mean, these are the small things you kind of take, the small victories <laughs> if you can get them. But, unfortunately, that's where we're at, you know. They're mathematically out, and, and that's where we're at. Yeah, I mean, that's really all you can do at this point, right? I mean, we've talked about ad nauseum about how, you know, it's just finding those little things to, to, to get up in the morning and get you going and, and to find that competitive spirit when, when your season's basically over. So the Islanders have, have done that for the most part. They've played, you know, even the games they've lost, they've kind of played competitively. You look at that Sunday game against Carolina in which they were, I mean, they were they were in it for the most part. You know, I think at one point they, they were winning that game and, they were down two nothing, and they battled back. Yeah. I mean, that was the big thing. They they didn't give up. They so came it, back. But that's that's an impressive thing. Caroline is a team that I, I think a lot of people now going into the playoffs could see going making a deep run in, in the postseason. I know we always say that every year about Carolina, and then they only, always end up losing in the second round to to whoever. Um, but I mean, that says something too. And you, and you look at the Islanders' record in the last you know month and a half or so, and you, you start to see pieces and. And, and glimpses of that team that we saw last year and, and two years ago, that, that competitive team, the, the, the record was somewhat you know, positive in, those, in that stretch as well. So there are building blocks that we see here, and I think the key to these last two, three games is really setting that momentum up for next season, setting the momentum for the offseason of, of really showing the management what this team is and, and how to kind of evaluate what happened this year. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's we talked about that in, in previous shows as well, that – they can use these remaining games as an evaluation period, and, and it's going to help Lou Lamarillo and the coaching staff out decide who they want to keep around because, you know, we expect big things out of this team in this summer, yeah. you know, tinkering with this roster to, to bring in who they might need to, to kind of help get them where they were supposed to be. So they're going to have to – they're not going to have 30 roster spots, so they're going to no. have to figure out who, <laughs> who's, who they're going to send off, who they're going to trade, who they yeah. might demote, whatever the case may be. So, I mean, that's something they can use these games for. And you see guys like Sebastian Ajo getting in there, and you see guys like even Koivula. I mean, obviously, it's a little by necessity. You had right. Pajot out in right. the COVID protocol. But still, I mean, these are guys that need to be evaluated. So, I mean, there's still there's still a method to the madness and a purpose to these games, even if they're not really counting so much towards the standings at this point. I mean, I think the most exciting thing right now for the Islanders organization is the fact that the Bridgeport Sound Tigers are, are going to be in the AHL playoffs. And um, that's, that's sort of a... a something to know too because you're going to see some guys down there that will have implications next season for potential roster spots or, or pushing other guys for roster spots or really setting like I said setting that tone for the offseason because then you kind of get a glimpse of what the Islanders if you're if you're Lou Lamorello or management uh, for the organization you get a better sense of what the team needs going into the offseason what they need to kind of figure out and what they have already in the, in the system so it's it's not a lot it's not a lot to say the <laughs> least um, you know there's a reason why Atu Ratu going to Bridgeport and playing down there is, is somewhat of an exciting prospect, no pun intended, because he is probably their number one prospect right now on a depth chart as far as that, that skilled potential scoring forward goes. So um, certainly a, something to keep an eye on as well as, as we go forward through the next couple weeks here or as long as uh, Bridgeport's in the playoffs. Christian, no doubt about it. But we got to take a break because we're bringing up Scott Charles from the Associated Press. So right. Want to thank everybody for coming out to the Long Island Marriott here in Uniondale by the Nassau Coliseum. Fantastic stuff. Want to thank everybody for tuning in live at twitch.tv slash hockey night NY. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Scott Charles from the Associated Press will join us. Nikki, where should I go to watch the Islander game? Dad, where should Fran go to watch the Islander game?
Just tell her to go to R.J. Daniels. Love the aisles? Go to R.J. Daniels and enjoy your favorite hockey team with their big screen TVs and in-game sound. R.J. Daniels also provides indoor and outdoor dining, catering, a vibrant late night bar scene, and weekly live entertainment. Need great flannels? Go to R.J. Daniels. Call or visit online at rjdaniels.com. From the Coliseum to the UBS Arena, we're still rocking the barn. We made a product based on something that we're big fans of. You're going to rock the barn, you're going to have a barn rock. Oyster Bay Brewing Company's Barn Rock. Available at UBS Arena and everywhere beer is sold. I don't want to hear it. It's over. I can't believe they fell short again. Yeah, but they played so well. They made it to the semifinals two years in a row. The semifinals aren't the cup. God damn it, the heat was lightning. They'll get another shot at it next year. I don't even want to talk about it anymore, all right? They lost, okay? Let me just sit here and enjoy the one thing that makes me a little bit happy. This fresh, delicious, tasty, meaty, turkey-filled blue line combo. I eat three every day to help keep me strong. Hey, Donnie, can I have one of those? Coming right up. Talk about a blast from the blue line. Blue Line Deli and Bagels. Our goal is to make you a hero. Did you have a nice break? Well, it's time to get back on the couch for more Islanders therapy with Johnny and C. Arnold on Hockey Night in New York. Welcome back to Hockey Night in New York, live from the Long Island Marriott, right across the street from the old Nassau Coliseum. It's everyone's favorite time of the program. Of course, that's on the line, brought to you by Thai Technology, if we're doing that right yet. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. I'm just making sure. We change everything up when we do these live yeah, shows good, and when man, we have uh, people in person. So I, I, I don't get the memo sometimes. But yes, Thai Technology presenting on the line. And with us on the line is, from the Associated Press is the great Scott Charles joining us live in person here. Scott, what's going on, bud? Not much, guys. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure, buddy. Yes. Welcome to the Long Island Marriott. So... <laughs> Let's dive into it here, pal. Uh, just talking about it before you got on. Obviously, the Islanders are playing out the string here. They, uh, they're not playing for standings anymore. So what are you looking for as you're covering this team? What's something that you want to see out of these guys as they look towards the summer? They might have to tinker a little bit. They might have to improve their roster just to uh, you know, kind of get where they were supposed to be next year. Yeah, my biggest thing right now is the Anders Lee-Brock Nelson combination. I think those two forwards playing together could reshape the vision of the Islanders' offensive unit and gives you a whole new idea of what the offseason looks like. Those two and then Matt Barzell is the second line or first line, vice versa. Now you have two real top six scoring lines with Peugeot and Palmieri on the third line. Now you might have an offensive team, and that's really what I'm looking for, to fill in the pieces around those guys. Yeah, Scott, I, it's definitely an interesting point, especially as you talk about the offense. The Islanders are never known as an offensive team. Um, and, I, and it's one of the interesting things that I think Sean and I always discuss is the fact that w w when you look at an 82-game schedule, the Islanders are never built for the 82 games. They're built for the, the playoffs and that, and that run. I, I, if you're the Islanders, what do you, how do you translate that, that success in the playoffs to success in the regular season for an 82-game season? Well, I'm not sure you do. I think that you got to build on your strengths. You have a strength in goaltending. And let's look back to last season. We had a strength in defense that the Islanders, they traded Nick Letty for cap space and to make some other moves, but now they made a strength of their team weaker, and that impacted them over the 82 game. They don't, they don't need to finish first in the division, they just need to get in, but this year they're not getting in, and I think that's because their strengths were not as strong as they were. Is there a major, ch is, it, is, is it a major change that needs to be made, or is it little tweaks that ultimately will make this team more successful and put them in a position where they're just going to get in, and then they're, 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 what their system and everything else is going to do the trick once they get into the postseason? Well, I'm not sure the major change is there. So I'm not sure if you have that ability with cap constraints with your current roster as it is. So I think you're looking more to tweak and run it back with the group. And you know now this Nelson-Lee combination is a major tweak. Like, we never thought about Lee playing with anyone else other than Barzell until Barzell went down. And Trotz, didn't, and Trotz admitted that he didn't think that way either. So now that, that that is the major change for me internally, and now how do you build off of that? Yeah, Scott, no question about it. And 
You know, Christian alluded to it a little bit earlier before he came on as well, how they're, they're evaluating some of the younger guys. You have Atu Ratu who came over. Uh, what sort of prospects do you think he has of, of maybe challenging to, to earn a spot on this team? I mean, if he does, does that mean they didn't do their job over the summer, acquiring guys that are going to take those spots in the top maybe nine positions? Or do you think he's a guy who maybe they'll look at to, to come in earlier than maybe Christian or I thought? Based on their history together of Trotz and Lamarillo, they're going to be patient. I mean, Dobson had a whole year of sitting on the bench essentially last year, and look where that's taken him. That's something they believe into their core. So I wouldn't be looking for them to make the jump right away. Could they fill in and steal a job after an injury? That could be the case, but I don't think they'll be counted on to start next season in the regular lineup. I call that the Devontae's route to the NHL. We remember him doing that a couple of years ago. Certainly, uh, uh, unfortunately, it was at the uh, at the expense of Thomas Hickey, who. who was a tremendous islander in his own right, but certainly I, I would agree with Scott uh, uh, with you there because that's always been the way Barry Trotz and, and Lou Lamarillo have, have handled this. But when when you look at these last couple games, Scott and, and Shawnee and I were just talking about this too. When you look at these last couple games, what do you make of them? I mean, obviously there's pride on the line, and you know all those all those kind of cliches that we always talk about when teams eliminated and they're just trying to close out a season. But if I'm a uh, you know if I'm a Matt Barzell, if I'm um, you know if I'm, I'm some of these other guys. What is my what are, what are we playing for? What is my motivation at this point? And, and kind of are you, is your sense kind of setting that tone for next season? You know that's a good question. I don't I don't think there's much motivation. I think they're ready to be done. Um, <laughs> five game losing streak here. You, so you think they're done? You think it's over? You think? You know, I mean, I just think about mailing it in. Yeah, on a personal <laughs> level, like what are you, you're playing not to get hurt. You want to finish the season. Yeah. Like, you just want to be done. Like this has been a disappointing season from start to finish for the Islanders. It's been. You know, the long road trip to start, they've been out of the race since the beginning, which is just not what they expected. No, you're absolutely right, Scott. But at the same time, you try to reach for silver linings, positives here and there. And a couple of those kind of came in the form of Brock Nelson. He's got 36 goals right now. He has a opportunity at 40 if he pots a couple here in the last three games. You have Noah Dobson, who's sitting at 47 points Dobson. now. Th three. <laughs> yes, Mr. Call Dobson, him by as we right name. affectionately call Call him. Uh, three points away from 50, that could happen. He's putting up points at quite the clip right now. I mean, do, do you look at those milestones and say, even if they don't mean much this season, you, as an, perhaps if you look at it through the lens of an Islander fan, maybe that's something that can carry over into the next year where you have maybe a 30 to 40 goal scorer in Brock Nelson and, and maybe a 40 to 50 point defenseman now in Noah Dobson. For sure. I mean, look at Chris Kreider right now for the Rangers. They're going to refer to him as a 30, 40 goal scorer for next year going in. For Nelson to come close to 40, and if he gets there, you're going to say, oh, my top line center is a 35-plus goal scorer? That's not how you thought of Brock Nelson <laughs> in the past. Also interesting that you're, you're even mentioning him as the top line center. Well, I, I think he has taken over that role. He's, the consistency has been there. Him, the combination of him and Lee has really opened my eyes. and I really think Barzell needs a running mate, and that's really the off-season question. Parise might be able to be that third person on that line based on how he's played, but now you're talking about another year later. He's, you know, not the youngest guy in the room. But, yeah, I think Nelson has taken over as that top-line center, and based on usage, that's where he's been this year. It, it's wild to, to imagine Brock Nelson as a 35-plus goal scorer, I mean, which is, which is the reality right now in the situation because, I mean, you think back to Scott when, when you and I started doing this. I mean... Brock Nelson was a guy who scores like five, six goals in, in October, and then all of a sudden he disappears. Um, so it's wild to kind of see that, that maturation. But when you look at a player like Matthew Barzal, because I'm curious, because everyone, everyone looks at Matthew Barzal and goes, he's the star of this team. He's the centerpiece of this team. When you look at the success of a Brock Nelson as that, as that number one center, does it almost make you go, maybe Matt Barzal isn't the star of this team, or isn't he, he isn't the cornerstone that everyone thought he was going to be? You know, I look at it the other way. I think this opens the door for Barzell to be a star. Um, he could go a lot against second-line pairings. He could have a lot more time and space on the rink. He could be the splashy speed guy that he wants to be, and that's the way he plays. And now he doesn't have the burden of being the top-line center to match up with the Patrice Bergerons or the top line for any other team. So I think this opens the door, and maybe this creates a path in three years, when you look at Barzell, well, this is why he's now a star center. Right on, Scott. And just uh, looking at the alumni weekend that they put together this past weekend, they, they had the guys come over. They had the exhibition game at the Northwell Health Center over the weekend. They honored them at the game Sunday. 
Uh, they brought Howie Rose in even to uh, to call cool. the game, which was fantastic. So maybe um, you can just share your opinion on you know just that whole situation, the way the the owners ever since the new owners ever since they took over, they've really embraced the alumni and they've really tried to go out of their way to to bring them back and get really get them involved in the in the organization. Not just mention their names, not just you know maybe mention them here and there, but they're literally getting them down to the rink, getting them down to UBS Arena, and uh, really embracing them as part of the Islander family. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, Palafontaine was at a game recently. John Tonelli came back to the organization. This is this was something that was important to Ledecky and Malkin, apparently, that they wanted the alumni involved. This is a passionate fan base. There's a deep connection to the area from these glory years in the 80s, and they're just trying to keep that going. And, you know, one thing we've seen with this Islanders group, it has meant something to them. They speak glowingly of the alumni. Like Clark Gillies had a real impact on this team. You know, from Matt Martin, Anders Lee, guys who've been here, there is a connection there that's more than just, hey, how are you? It's good to see you. Yeah, and, and you mentioned, you know, alumni and, and the impact that they've had on, on the not only the players, but also the fan base and the franchise. Uh, Mike Bossy, obviously a huge loss in the Islander family. Um, he passed, uh, they were on the road when they passed. They weren't able to honor him until they got back on Tuesday against the Florida Panthers. They had a really nice tribute for him. And, I mean, you look at all the, the, the words that were spoken about Mike and, and, and just what a loss he is to the community. Maybe you can kind of expand on that and, and talk about, um, you know, maybe just words you haven't heard out of some of these players and people involved in the organization until, you know, they, they kind of, you know, offered these words about, you know, uh, his passing. Yeah, the, the bigger thing about Bossy for me has been seeing the highlight reel of how bad the goaltending was back then. Um, <laughs> that's been something that really stands out to me and just positionally, set, like, they're just all over the place. Um, but, yeah, Bossy was a tremendous scorer, and he was one of those missing pieces that they just couldn't they couldn't get over the hump without having that lethal score, and he was the guy, as everyone knows pretty well about him. And we're talking with Scott Charles here on the line from the – Talking with Scott Charles from the Associated Press here on the line, brought to you by our friends over at Thai Technology. And, and certainly Scott was not shy about sharing his opinion of, of 1980s goaltending when we were watching that uh, <laughs> tr wonderful tribute video for Mike Bossy, which was absolutely phenomenally done by the New York Islander organization. A, a really tremendous night all around for, for an organization, I will say, for an organization that has usually done a very bad job of honoring certain moments in history in the years past. Ever since the Ledecky Malkin group has come in, they've really kind of revamped, as Scott was saying, revamped and, and kind of changed the culture and changed its ability to kind of honor uh, honor its past and kind of hammer that point home to its current fan base and, and to its current players. But Scott, obviously now um, you know, with these, with these two, three games left on the docket for the New York Islanders with the season coming to a close when, when you look back at everything that's sort of happened this year COVID Injuries, more COVID. Uh, what do you make of, of why the Islanders are sitting in the spot that they are? Is this a product of bad management in the offseason, not putting the Islanders in a good spot to compete, or is this a product of circumstance? I think circumstances played a part, but I think there was a miscalculation at the beginning of the season. Um, the Nick Letty trade, I really do think, hurt them more than they anticipated. And maybe it wasn't the piece of Letty, but not replacing him. Um, having a Zdeno Char and Andy Green, you could carry one of those guys. Do you really need two? It's a big difference. Um, so I think that's the bigger part. But now going forward, you've got to validate your two conference final appearances. That those were under extraordinary circumstances. This was one of the more normal years of the past three, <laughs> which is crazy to say. Still a reach. <laughs> Still a reach, but one, more normal than hockey in August and a bubble. And True. now that you're coming into next year, is this group, was this a flash in the pan that they took advantage of the circumstances? Or are they actually a really talented team that can handle the duration of a full schedule and the playoffs? Well, Scott, let me, let me simplify the question for you a little bit here. <laughs> if there was no 13-game road trip and no COVID issues to start this season, are they in the playoffs right now? Probably not. Wow. Wow. Well, but see, that, I, I, I kind of like that answer because you talk to everybody. And, yeah, I understand, like, COVID played a factor. And I understand that, that the 13-game the, the road trip played a factor. But my, I've said this on the show before. My concern going into this offseason is, has always been the Islanders are going to use that as an excuse for why we just got to reinvest in, you know, bringing, you know, third-line center, you know, X, Y, Z, and, and to kind of shore up the depth and this and that and not re make real capital investments, so, you know, you know, sort of speak here and to upgrade certain areas. And 
when Scott says that, I think it kind of validates that opinion because I think there's a lot of people, I think there's a lot of fans that believe that, and, and I'm concerned that there might be people within the organization that might believe that. Do you think that's the case, Scott? When you, when you look at the way Lamorello has talked to me, Barry Trotz has talked in the last couple of weeks, do you see the organization kind of having a similar uh, viewpoint? Well, I think they're going to run it back. I don't think they're bringing in an $8 million player. I'm not sure how they would do that. Um, so they're going to tinker and try to fill in some pieces. You know, As I mentioned, Nelson Lee gives you a different viewpoint of how your lineup could be constructed right. and gives you more options throughout the year. So I think that's going to be part of it. But, yeah, they're going to – I mean, the options aren't there to go acquire big-game players, add in a lot of salary. So you're going to have to run it back with this group and th- sprinkle in some other pieces that you weren't able to get last year. Well, Scott, let's forget about the, the salary cap for a second and just what did they need? If you look at this roster and they're saying, okay, we got to get back to, to where we were. We got to get back to the Final Four, get to the finals, go farther, whatever the case may be. What, what did you see out of this team now in this 82-game season? What are they lacking that they're going to need this summer to, to, to get there? The, the obvious answer is scoring, but I'm going to I'm gonna go on the defensive end. I think you got to play to your strengths. you got strength and goal. You want to be a strong defensive team. That's where you need to be strong there. And don't make your strengths a weakness or don't weaken them. And that's where if you tell me that they needed a real partner for Dobson, you know, Zidane Ochoa is going to pay dividends for Dobson later in his career. But he needs a guy who could skate with him. You know, Char is not 27 anymore. So that's really where I'm looking for this offseason. Strengthen your defense. Maybe you make a change up front, and that's trading a Beauvillier for a different type of forward. Um, just like a, a small tweak like that. But I would want to get stronger on the back end. Scott Charles covers the New York Islanders and hockey in general for the Associated Press. Scott, really appreciate you joining us live here at the Long Island Marriott, coming down and, and having some fun with us and answering some tough questions that no one apparently asked the, uh, <laughs> asked the Islanders at the moment. Yeah, well, my pleasure, guys. It's great to be here. Good crowd here. It's fun to be a part of this. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, Scott. Really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, buddy. The show rolls on here at Hockey Night in New York. That was our segment on the line brought to you by Thai Technology. We're going to take another break here. We're going to bring in, bring in an old friend of the show, old co-host, Mr. Tony Stabile. So once again, thanks for hanging out here at the Long Island Marriott by the Nassau Coliseum. We're raising money for the Long Island Rough Riders sled hockey team. We're going to take that break. We'll be right back. Nikki, where should I go to watch the Islander game? Dad, where should Fran go to watch the Islander game? Just tell her to go to R.J. Daniels. Love the Isles? Go to R.J. Daniels and enjoy your favorite hockey team with their big screen TVs and in-game sound. R.J. Daniels also provides indoor and outdoor dining, catering, a vibrant late night bar scene, and weekly live entertainment. Need great planules? Go to R.J. Daniels. Call or visit online at rjdaniels.com. From the Coliseum to the UBS Arena, we're still rocking the barn. We made a product based on something that we're big fans of. You're going to rock the barn, you're going to have a barn rock. Oyster Bay Brewing Company's Barn Rock. Available at UBS Arena and everywhere beer is sold. I don't want to hear it. It's over. I can't believe they fell short again. Yeah, but they played so well. They made it to the semifinals two years in a row. The semifinals aren't the cup. God damn it, the heat was lightning. They'll get another shot at it next year. I don't even want to talk about it anymore, all right? They lost, okay? Let me just sit here and enjoy the one thing that makes me a little bit happy. This fresh, delicious, tasty, meaty, turkey-filled blue line combo. I eat three every day to help keep me strong. Hey, Donnie, can I have one of those? Coming right up. Talk about a blast from the blue line. Blue line deli and bagels. Our goal is to make you a hero. Did you have a nice break? Well, it's time to get back on the couch for more Islanders therapy with Shawnee and C. Arnold on Hockey Night in New York. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back from twitch.tv slash Hockey Night NY. And of course, live here at the Long Island Marriott in Uniondale, right near the old barn, the Nassau Coliseum. We're getting you all ready for the Islanders versus the Washington Capitals. And join us right now, great friend of the show, former co-host who needs no introduction, 
Mr. Tony Stabil. Tony, how you doing, buddy? What's going on, guys? How are you? Tony, welcome back, What's bud. Happening? Yeah, doing great, pal. Great. Glad you made it, I'm pal. always excited to see Tony uh, because now I know the true talents of Hockey Night in New York is, is here wow. in the house. He's I see we're recycling old jokes, huh? Always. Listen, okay. let him go. Let him talk. Five yeah, it makes you feel good, huh, pal? Yeah, <laughs> give you ten minutes to cut that out, pal. This is great. This is, this is a nice event here. Look, yeah. you got a lot of people out here. Yes. You got Scott Charles come out. Look at this. Scott Charles. I haven't seen him in a while. Stefan Rosner. Stefan Rosner's here. Hockey I got to meet him the tonight house. first time. So there we go. This nice is hat, great. buddy. great. Love the hat. Yeah, Drive for long Five, time. Viles Fanatics. And if you remember, we used to do shows here many moons ago. We did. That we champs, did. It, right? looked, uh, it looked a little different back then. Just a <laughs> bit. Just but a yes, bit. yes, it's nice to be back in the old stomping grounds. Yeah. So, Tony, obviously you've been hanging out here. You heard what we've had to say so far. And we'll get a little more of a fan's perspective from you because, obviously, uh, you do love the team. They do have a, a big place nestled in that big heart of yours. So... You look at this season here, it obviously didn't go the way we expected. And what do you make of it? And, and you know, I guess we'll, we'll look towards the future. But just, you know, when you, when you look at everything as a whole from how it started in the beginning with the 13-game road trip, the, the COVID issues, that you had some injury problems, Pollock being out. I mean, you know, you go down the list, and, and there, there were some things that definitely just didn't go their way. What do you make of this season, Tony Stabile? How does it feel to be Tony Stabile? <laughs> Oh, Isn't not, there a music I'm, that goes along with that or something? There, there, it's not, it's not here. It's not the key. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, there was at one time. Um, I mean, look, the only way you can look at this season is that everything that could possibly have gone wrong went wrong. Okay, the 13-game road trip at the beginning of the season, you know, there was a reason why Lou Lamarillo was so pissed about that whole thing at the beginning of the year. So that, that's, that was a, a big start the season off on the wrong foot kind of a thing. And then the COVID issues, you know, them and a couple of other teams were like the guinea pigs for how the NHL was going to handle COVID outbreaks for the year. So, you know, that, that didn't, that really didn't work out in their favor. Yes, the injury problems, but you have a lot of guys on this team that really just never caught their stride. You know, you have guys who have played up to, you know, what they usually do. I mean, Alan Pellick on a team where pretty much everybody is a minus is a plus 18. Okay, the next closest guy to him is Zdeno Chara at plus six. So, I mean, you look at things like that and, you know, you see Pelic has had the year that you would expect. Brock Nelson, 36 goals in 70 games that he's played this year. That's a, that's a, a big step for Brock. He is, you know, we talked about, about this, I think, the last time I, we, we did a show together, was that, you know, we wanted to see other guys get to that level of consistency the Anthony Beauvilliers, you know, even Josh Bailey, like you, you want to see him not go through a 15 or 20 game stretch where you don't see his name on the score sheet, you know, where he's going three and four games in a row with taking those shots. Like those are things that have, have adversely affected this team. There are things that have gone really well for them, but those, those four core things that have gone wrong are, are the reason why they're in the position that they are right now. Tony, like I said, it's always good to have you back on the show. I'm always excited when you're here. I'm, I'm curious to get a, your perspective because when you look at the totality of the season, right? I mean, every, like you said, everything that's gone wrong could go that could go wrong has has gone wrong for whatever reason. Um, and so I would love to get your perspective. Is is, is UBS Arena cursed? Did, did someone put a hex on it? Was it built on a on a on, on some sort of ancient burial ground? What's the deal? I like you a lot, but I don't. I can't. I, I don't even know why you even asked me that question. Uh, so there's no dead horses underneath the, the arenas. Is I, I, I don't. I don't okay, think so. Okay, I don't think so. I, I don't think so either. And Jimmy Hoffa, I don't think was in that area either. So we're. I think no. He's buried under giants. Didn't they take that up? Or, yeah. Anyway. So the, look, I I think that yes, uh, the the whole thing with UBS kind of played into. The beginning part of the season, I think that they've become very comfortable there. They definitely play well in the building, um, but the run of bad luck that this team has come into, the things on the ice, the things obviously off the ice, it has been a really, really tough season for this organization, and I just think that they never were able to get their feet underneath them. I, I, and in all seriousness, I, I did want to ask a, a, a more serious question about that, because obviously every, everyone's talked about the arena, and everyone's you know, had their opinion, and uh, you know, obviously, with the way the season has gone, it almost seems like natural instinct that somebody or, or some segment of the fan base was going to, oh, should just stayed at Nassau Coliseum, right? You're always going to hear that. I am curious what the what the settlement has been like for you as a fan to get into a new building like that and, and adjust to that and, and 
be in a building finally for the first time that is that is an Islanders home. I know we've talked about it ad nauseum this year, but it always kind of seems to pop up, especially now with the with the lack of success this season with with the team. Yeah, I mean, obviously you would want your first season in a new building to to be a successful one. I mean, I think that was the grand or plan any season going for in. that matter. Or any <laughs> season, but I mean, you know, obviously the first one would be a good starting point. I mean, I believe the Yankees won the World Series their first year at New, at new Yankee Stadium. Uh, I'm looking at Christian when I ask that because he would know the answer to that question. So, I mean, better you, chance than Sean for sure. <laughs> the Yankees are a baseball true. team. That's true. Yes. Yes. So I, I think that, well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you my reaction when I first walked in, uh, you know, when I, I walked into the, the, like, the grand hall there and came up the escalator, I, 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 I had tears in my eyes. I mean, I, I just, it's, it's beautiful. It, it really is. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous on the outside. It's gorgeous on the inside. Uh, it, is, it is the building that we've always wanted as fans. It's the one that we've been talking about since I was a junior in high school. And, you know, anybody knows, I mean, I've been out of high school for like 28 years now. So, I mean, that's a, you <laughs> yes. know, like it's a... <laughs> It's it's a big it's a big deal and you know they they really did it right. You have owners that really care and you know they they, they, they put a lot of love into this building. They put a lot of you know a lot of hard work and a lot of money. Yeah. And you know I walked into the building the first time and I went right into the team store. I'm like, these guys built this beautiful building for me. I need to buy a jersey <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. So uh, you know I I, I just I, I feel like. You know the the building thing is is we've been talking about it for so long, and the fact that we don't ever have to talk about it again is just music to my ears. I will say that I did also the first time I went to the building as a spectator, I did go in with tears in my eyes as well. But that was only because I had to go with Sean because he was the one who had the tickets. <laughs> Some joke there, Christian. Well done, well done. And I can understand that because being in my presence is an emotional experience. So, <laughs> so yeah, I you can that. say that again. <laughs> <laughs> so negative emotion. So, Tony, we were talking to Scott about bright spots in this team. We mentioned names like Brock Nelson. We mentioned names like Noah Dobson. How about Ilya Sorokin? How about the year that he's had? He you even have people outside of Long Island even mentioning him in the Vesna converse, conversation. Now, obviously, he's not going to take it. You have guys that have some more wins, maybe even some better numbers up there. But the fact that they're even talking about him on a non-playoff team, what, what does that say about Ilya Sorokin? Really first, you know, full chance at having having the uh, the starting reins here at the New York Islanders. I mean, I think he's shown pretty much from the very beginning that he was going to take off and, you know, and, and take the reins for that starter position. Uh, you look at his numbers, I mean, he's got a 926 save percentage on a team that really hasn't been in a playoff race since, uh, what, in late October? Yeah. So, I mean, so he's he's played tremendously well. I mean, yes, his goals against average is a little higher than some of the top of the, so the, of the elite guys this year, the Shesterkins and you know, and they think even Freddie Anderson's got a little bit lower um, goals against average. But his save percentage is higher, I believe, than all but Shesterkin, if I'm not mistaken. So um, he's been, if there is a bright spot in this team, and I know we talk about Noah Dobson and, and, and the, you know, the, the ability that he, that, that he has and the fact that he's becoming a number one offensive defenseman right before our eyes, but Ilya Sorokin becoming a number one goaltender and a top five, you know, Vezina candidate in a year that they didn't play well in front of him, it, that's, that, I mean, that's a tremendous step forward. Yeah, no, no doubt about it, Tony. And Christian, I believe you have a live update here for the game tonight. Yes. Coming yes, through the wire. Have, yes, just down, what just do you down got the pipeline. The Islanders say that Zidane Ochara and Brock Nelson will not dress tonight due to non-COVID illnesses. So, I mean, I know the team was dealing with a stomach bug issue a week or so ago, so this might be a continuation of that. But it's a non-COVID illness, the team is saying. Both Zidane Ochara and Brock Nelson will not dress for tonight's game. You would hope, because we were talking about it earlier with Scott, too, that, that this passes quickly, at least for Brock Nelson, who is on the verge of becoming a 40-goal scorer, and for the, the uh, for Donnie Bagels, our great sponsor over at Blue Line Day <laughs> Bagels, uh, Bagel Deli, we would hope nothing more than see him get 40 goals because that would make Donnie very happy. Yes, I think it would make a lot of people in Iowa the country happy. I like that you said on the verge as if it's going to happen. Like you, I know. I'm I, you got some money on it? I'm, no, no. Well, I always, give Donnie, that I, always, that, buddy? I always give Donnie a hard time. I, I tell him, oh, he's never going to get 40 goals to fight during this and that, just to get under his skin. But I do hope he gets 40 goals, if nothing else, just for Donnie Bagel. He's pretty close. Now, he close. now Tony... Do you think that's something, that range at least, like I'm not going to say can he be a 40 goal scorer every year. I mean, we don't even know if he's going to be that this year. But is this a range now that he can maintain going forward? Is this is this kind of a, 
a, a sort of another breakout, at least another step in the breakout of Brock Nelson, where they can look at him as a 30 to 35 goal scorer every year? I absolutely think so. I, I definitely do. I don't think if, even if he doesn't score 40 goals, which he deserves to, and he'll now have missed, you know, he'll, he'll miss at least, what, nine or ten games this year, so we'll never know whether he would have been able to get there or not. This but is a shame. The point, the point of the matter is, is that he is definitely a 30 goal scorer at this point. I think that he has, he's shown, and we, we, again, we've talked about this, you know, for the last year or two, that he has become the most consistent Islander on a night in, night, night, in, night out basis. And, you know, the progression and what Barry Trotz, the effects that Barry Trotz has had on him has been tremendous. And, yeah, I believe he's a 30, 35 goal scorer every year now. Tony, I like it, and, and I have to agree with you. I've said this uh, in previous shows here. I think Brock Nelson has definitely developed into the, the most consistent player on this team, and I think Barry Trotz has a lot to do with that. He was that, you know, Brocktober player, or, you know, the one-month-and-done type of guy before yeah. before Barry Trotz came in, and, and ever since he took over, he his ice time went up. He put a lot more trust in him. He put him in a lot more situations, and he's really flourished under Barry Trotz, and, and, and I think you hit the nail on the head here that he's the most consistent player on this New York Islanders team as of this moment. But fellas, what do you say? We're at the tw we're at the 640 mark here. We got 20 minutes until puck drop. So, why don't we get into a little what's on tap here, huh? I'm all for it. Sorry. Christian is all for it. Tony, we're going to keep you around, man. We're going to keep you in for the second I'm here, in so for it. we're going to keep it, it going. All right. Let's go. It's time for what's on tap. And now, it's time for what's on tap. Brought to you by R.J. Daniels, American Bar and Grill. That's right, folks. It's time for What's on Tap. Brought to you by R.J. Daniels, American Bar and Grill. Christian, this is your time to shine. What's on Tap. This is the last week of the Islander season. Yeah. So, what's how they how they capping this season off here? Well, no pun intended. Ca well, <laughs> they're capping it off with a pair of games against the Capitals tonight, obviously. In just under 20 minutes, they'll face the Washington Capitals on the road, their final road game of the year, and then they'll take on the Washington Capitals in the uh, penultimate game at UBS Arena for the season on Friday night at 7 p.m., or Thursday night, I should say. And then that's followed up with a game on Friday night against the defending Stanley Cup champions who just visited the White House, actually, the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's the final game at UBS Arena at 7.30 on Friday night. What a game that could have been if the Islanders had done their job this well, season. You know what's amazing is, is when you look at the schedule between the Islanders and the Rangers, because we, we talked about this with Chris Botta a little bit at the, at the R.J. Daniels show when he was on with us, is that these games genuinely... A couple of weeks ago, if things had gone a little differently, these th games could have genuinely meant a lot with the Islanders playing the, the Lightning, the, Cap the, the Rangers uh, playing the Washington Capitals that final game of the season as well. Well, if uh, you remember, Chris King mapped it all out for us yes. when he came And so on. did Chris Botta. But, I mean, King yeah. was like, if they do this, they have right, this. Right, I right. mean, he was super excited about it. I mean, you know, he had the hope still. There, there was a lot of hope, but right now... The Islanders just looking out to close the season on a positive note. A couple of wins here. Uh, you know, play a little bit of a spoiler against the Washington Capitals. Get a little bit of revenge, I guess you could say, against the Tampa Bay Lightning in that final game. Or at the very least, give the fans that one last positive memory from UBS Arena before they walk out for the, uh, the final game of the year. Yeah, Tony, it'd be nice to close out the building with some back-to-back -back wins, huh? Draft position. <laughs> Draft position. Well, we haven't had So the, are you saying throw in the towel, pal? Look, if you haven't seen the last couple of games, <laughs> I think we've already seen that kind of coming, guys. No, I look, at wow. this point, if you're going to look, if you're Tony in the playoff Steele hopes, hates the Islanders. Oh, give first. me. Come on. That's, that's I mean, this, a Christian look, take. Seriously, that's seriously, a Christian take. Think of it this way, right? Think of it this way. If you're going to if you're going to win, right? And you're going to make the playoffs, you do everything you can to win every game and every point possible, right? If sure. you're going to lose, what's the next thing you can win? Draft. Thank you. Right. So what would be better, okay, getting some, some positive thoughts that no one's going to remember who won the last game oh. of the season by next year or by getting a couple of spots higher in, in the NHL draft? Well, well Tony, I mean, <laughs> with that thought in mind, should the Islanders even dress a goalie tonight? No. <laughs> Just tell Sorokin I'm available. To sit on the bench. I, I, I'm available for the helicopter ride if you need it. We're gonna wow. we're gonna send Sean down on the Amtrak. He'll get there by the second period. He'll play goal the rest of the night. I don't think that's a good move for anybody. <laughs> I mean, it'll definitely help the trap yeah, position, but, but me it's not Christian gonna help would the would love ice. to watch that, bro, bro. Oh, I, I mean, I I'm sure it would be entertaining. Oh, also, yeah, would be. Uh, friend of the show in the chat, T Boyle thirteen says Robin Salo is gonna take Chara's place in the lineup. Tonight. Yeah, he was called yes, up on emergency call. So it'll be nice to see him again before the season's out. I mean, now that it's 
his name has been brought up. Tony, what would you think of his appearance earlier on in the year? Yeah. I, I would have liked to have seen more of him. Uh, I, I do understand the idea of having Bridgeport make the playoffs and having those guys have the ability to play in a playoff yeah. run. So I get it, right? And it's it's the right move. But I would love to have seen more of Robin Sally, without a question. Without a question. Hey, uh, Tony, any plans to go up to Bridgeport to see one of those games? With, I would really like to. Yeah, well, I, I don't really have much free time, <laughs> but uh, if I did, yeah, I would like to do it. I, I've always wanted to go up there to, to You've see. You've never been game. to Bridgeport. I've never really? been there. Nope. All your years of fandom. Yeah, I've never gone. Wow. That has is Sean, actually we need very to make this surprising. I'm a, I'm a New York. Sh- I'm a New York State guy. We need to do a show up there, and we need to take Tony's to be all on the road with us to see a Bridgeport. Team. I like uh, Bridgeport it. Bridgeport Islander game. Sign it, I, I like sign it. it up, bro. I go. I'll go. Hey, listen. Now that now that we're actually you know allowed to go out there into the world, you know, we'll make yeah. a trip out to Bridgeport. Hundred percent, bro. I'm, yeah, this this guy calls me. I, he called me 15 minutes before the show. Said come down here. So I was here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the things we say live on the air. It's, <laughs> it's very entertaining. So. <laughs> So that's what's on tap, ladies and gentlemen. The Islanders have three games left, and then it is summer, summer, summertime for the New York Islanders. Like Christian said, you got the home and home against the Caps starting tonight. Then they close it out against the Tampa Bay Lightning Friday, which was a rescheduled game. I think they they actually bumped that game at night because the Capitals game was supposed to happen in December. No, I thought I'm pretty sure that oh they moved the date. You mean. I Correct. Think the, the, the Lightning were always supposed to be the last game of the season. Yes, but it was supposed to be Thursday. Yes, they bumped it that to that Friday, and they brought the Capitals game from December 23rd. Yes, yeah, I believe that's to correct. be Thursday night. So this is again part of that uh, really compiled, compacted schedule that the Islanders have had. Uh, you know, this this uh, last portion of the season here. I mean, they basically played like four games a week, it almost feels like. Just about. You know, I mean, every other night, a couple of back-to-backs every week. I mean, basically, whenever we were doing this What's on Tap segment, you had four games yeah. coming up every there were a week. Lot of games. Unbelievable. But that was... That was What's on Tap, brought to you by R.J. Daniels, American Bar and Grill. That's right, folks. That was What's on Tap, brought to you by the great R.J. Daniels American Bar and Grill. We're just under 15 minutes until puck drop here, so we're going to take a brief break. When we come back, we're going to do the Hero of the Week. Tony, we're keeping you around. You're going to do it with us. Folks, once again, I want to thank you all for coming here live to the Long Island Marriott here in Uniondale by the old barn, the Nassau Coliseum, and everybody tuning in at twitch.tv slash hockey night NY. Hey, Long Island Marriott, how we doing here? We got a couple of woes. Let's go we, we got go. some let's go oh, Islanders. Yeah, the guy, enthusiasm right is there. there love, love the crowd love coming it. out here for a game against the Caps and, and on an otherwise lost season. Give you all a bunch of credit here. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it'll be time for the Hero of the Week. Customer service is the backbone of any great business, and reliable telecommunication is essential to keeping your client base happy. Introducing Thai Technology, a low-cost, flexible internet phone service founded on the idea that every customer deserves exceptional service while providing simple setup and management and easy integration to clients across the country. Thai Technology will not only create a custom solution tailored to your specific needs, but will partner with you to provide a competitive edge to you and your clients. And if you need support, you won't be routed to an automated call center in another country you'll get a live representative that had a personal hand in building your account so islander fans if your business is looking for a change from companies like spectrum verizon or optimum thai technology is offering three free months of service for any of its affordable packages just call 516-856-7800 that's 516-856-7800 or visit them on the web at thai technology.com that's thai t-i-e technology.com thai technology the right choice for your internet phone service Ladies and gentlemen, when you hear this song, that means it's time for the Hero of the Week, brought to you by the Blue Line Deli and Bagels Half Price Hero, which this week is the Blue Liner, featuring chicken cutlet, bacon, melted American cheese, Russian dressing on a toasted garlic hero. Stop on in to the Blue Line Deli Huntington location all week, starting tomorrow for half off the Blue Liner. Mention Hockey Night in New York, and they will honor that lovely lovely deal so without further ado ladies and gentlemen christian Arnold, we're going to start with you who is your hero of the week my hero of the week is of course someone who despite despite a lot of things this season has persevered <laughs> if you will 
That, of course, I'm talking about is the great Bruce Brown from the Brooklyn. Oh, wait, we're talking about that. <laughs> that's, right. uh, that's, that's not right. Zdeno Chara. I know the man has gotten a lot of flack from myself included. Myself included. I will own up to that. Uh, deservingly so. But at the same time, uh, Zdeno Chara, certainly when it comes to what he's been nominated for as a, for this award, the Masterton Award, um, certainly fits the criteria. Of course, the Masterton goes to the NHL player that best exemplifies the qualities of perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to ice hockey. And I think Zdeno Chara, at 44 years of age, certainly fits the bill for that as a man who's uh, shown great sportsmanship, has shown his, his ability to kind of take a lot of players under his wing and, and create a lot of talent, help, help develop a lot of talented players in this league. Uh, not just on the Islanders, but of course brings up the Boston Bruins. I'm sure with his time with the Washington Capitals for the Islanders played tonight. Uh, but this season specifically certainly has lived up to that that mantra as well. Christian, I love the pick. You dug real deep and, and, and you know, you got a great pick there with Zidane Shar. A fantastic job here getting nominated for the Bill Masterson Trophy. And look, in fairness, the Islanders are on a five-game losing streak. So it's a little difficult to find a hero out there when you're not winning games. But yeah. I'm going to switch it up here with my pick, and I'm actually going with the Islanders organization for that dedication to the alumni that we talked about earlier with Scott Charles having the alumni weekend, bringing all those players in. Buddy, like again, when you're on a five game losing streak, you gotta think outside the box here. Bill Masterson Trophy, Islanders organization. But, but in truth, I mean, I love the alumni weekend. I wish I could have gone to Northwell on Saturday. I wasn't I able to attend. it was attend. a great game. It and it was packed. Fun. Yeah, I saw the pictures. There was a ton of people there. You had Islander fans, Ranger fans, and they did a good job not only getting Islander alumni down, but they got some great Ranger players yeah. too. Adam Graves, Alexi Kovalev. I mean, some great names there. So the Darius participation. Kasparides. Yeah, Darius Kasparides, who wore an Islander jersey. <laughs> yeah. He did wear the Islander jersey. He made the right call, but he did play for both teams, to our chagrin. But uh, just a, a big tip of the cap to Islanders ownership and, and what they've done. You know, again, with the alumni, bringing them back. And, and, and ho- I hope this is a tradition that continues. It would be great to see more players coming in on a year-to-year basis. I'd love to catch a, that exhibition game next year. They had Terjan, They had Hogue. Yeah. I mean, a lot of great players that, they, that came down. And, and I think that's just fantastic. So, uh, again, tip of the cap to the New York Islanders. And, Tony, would you like to chime in with a hero? I would, actually. Please do. I, I'm actually going to give my Hero of the Week to Brian Trache because All right. I, in, in the face of something that – probably was extremely emotional for him to have an alumni weekend uh, the week after uh, one of his closest friends in the game passes away in, in the great Mike Bossy. I think that him going and, and participating and, you know, just talking about Mike and, and talking about those, you know, the times he had there were, were just outstanding by him and probably was incredibly and difficult to do. So I give, I give a lot of credit to, uh, to Brian Trotchy for being able to pull that off. Fantastic stuff, fellas. I think you both did a great job. Uh, I get five points. You goes. You guys get four points each for the Hero of the Week this week. I think that's how we're going to do it this time. So we're going to team around. up, and actually we'd be 8-5, so yeah. we win. Oh, no, like it's that. an, an individual yes. effort. Yes. I'm honestly, sorry. So you guys tie if, for second place. That's the case. I would give Tony six points because that was an even better Hero of the Week than, than your Isles organization. It may have been. Point. I think you might have a decent argument there. But, but you know, the jury's out. We'll, we'll have I got to, you, uh, Tony. I got you. We'll have to go I to really the, like him. I really yeah, like it. I, I love sitting in between the two of you. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful. I'm so glad I'm, I'm here in the middle. So, folks, once again, the Hero of the Week brought to you by the Blue Line Deli and Bagels Half Price Hero, which is the Blue Liner. Stop on in to the Blue Line Deli and Bagels Huntington location starting tomorrow and then all week. Mention Hockey Night New York for half off the Blue Liner. Fantastic stuff there. And real quick, I mean, we're under 10 minutes to go. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter segment here, but we're going to go into questions brewing real quick. So here we go. It's time for questions brewing, brought to you by Oyster Bay Brewing Company, Long Island's Gold Coast Brewery. That's right, folks. It's time for questions brewing, brought to you by the Oyster, the great Oyster Bay Brewing Company, brewers of the fabled Barn Rocker Session Ale. Tony, do you indulge in a, in a barn rocker every now and then? I have been known to. You have been. I've seen it myself. It's it's quite nice. It's quite delicious. It is. It's, uh, it, it is quite nice. Yes. It, I love the design of the can. Beautiful. It's just really, really nice. Orange and blue orange, and white. Orange, blue, and what white. What is happening it's, right it's now? It's really... 
I'm following his lead. I don't oh, know yeah, what I don't, I was talking about. No, no, I, was I, I, I was looking at him. I wouldn't have gone down this road, but I'm just following him. So what are we doing here? Oh, we're right. not allowed to have fun here on the show. We have. We have. Uh, I've decided to pick one question from the hat. That's fine. We're gonna go with the great T Boyle asking uh, question. T Boyle thirteen asking question. Brewing. Do you see Barzal getting traded this summer? Tony, since you're the special guest here tonight, I'm going to flip that question first to you. What do, what do you say to that question? Wow. <laughs> How do you feel? How does it feel to be Tony Stabile well, now? As, what a cop-out shot. As we, dis- as we, gonna answer. As we discussed uh, about a month ago, uh, I am very disappointed in the season that Matthew Barzal has had this year. Uh, I do not see him being traded this summer. Would it surprise me if it did happen? No. But really? I do not see that happening. No. Your your surprising response is surprising to me. I can't see that happening <laughs> at all. I I can't see it happening either. But it would not shock me. If Noah Dobson was traded this summer, that would shock me. If Matthew Brown okay. was traded this summer, that would not shock me. Do I see it happening? Absolutely not. But it wouldn't shock me. Okay, interesting. Well, Christian, you might as well throw your hat in the ring here too. I mean, Matt Barzell is going to be an eye on the next year, right? Yeah, I mean, that w- <laughs> I would genuinely be shocked if Matthew Barzell got traded. Um, it's fun to ask to answer the question. Yeah, but, you know. I just I don't yeah. I, I think the Islanders organization has a lot of faith that he'll be able to be a big. I mean, that, not that he'll be able to. He is, um, but that he'll he's a cornerstone of the organization. Uh, well, let me let me ask you something. Yes. there, young sir. Uh, yes, I do believe he'll force a trade like James Harden did because that's his favorite. <laughs> oh, that's no, no, stop well, it! You really just want to talk. Go. He really you just wants go. to talk about the Nets. You notice that, right? That's, he wants to bring. Tony, the Nets we up. might have to bring you back. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to bring you back. But in, in all seriousness, like after after this season, right? You have to think there's just a little doubt in their minds whether or not he's ever going to get to that superstar level that he obviously but has the talent to I make. Don't, I don't think he's a... But here's my here's my difference. I don't think he's a superstar, and I don't know if he... He does. Well, there's a difference between a player and the actuality of what he is, right? Like, Matthew Barzal is a very talented star player in this league. He's not a superstar. Mm-hmm. I don't... I think anyone who thinks that he is a superstar doesn't necessarily, necessarily understand what Matthew Barzal is fundamentally the best at when he's playing at his peak, right? Matt, Dubar, Matt, Matt can, he, you know, he's a very great puck handler. He can create a lot of um, really interest, intriguing and fun moments that, that are, are highlight real moments, and they happen every once in a while. But he's an assist man. He's not a goal scorer. And I think people don't fully understand that yet, for, for, lack, of a better, for lack of a better term, just because they still assume, they look at him like you just said, and they think of him as a superstar. Well, we're just about out of time here. So, Tony, I'm giving you some quick rapid-fire questions here to close out questions. Brewing brought to you by Oyster Bay Brewing Company. So, Shoot. question number one. Does Brock Nelson hit 40 goals, especially after we just heard he's not playing tonight? <laughs> if he's got the stomach flu, no, he ain't hitting 40 Probably goals. Probably not hitting 40 goals. Okay, question number two. Noah Dobson, does he hit 50 points? He's got 47 right now. Yes. He's going to hit 50 points. And nice. the last one, is Ilya Sorokin going to get any Vesna votes? Yes. Okay. You have a ballpark here for me? Of how many votes? Yeah, I yeah, can, how many? I, I say he... <laughs> I'll, I'll go... I'll, I'll say this. No, I don't know how many votes he's getting, but I'll tell you, he ends up in the top four. Wow. Okay. I, I like I that. Don't, I don't know if I'd say top four. Okay. Well, I was asking Tony, Christian. But, all right, fine. Whatever. I'll just... <laughs> you're right. You're right. I'll just... Uh, that was Questions Brewing, brought to you by Oyster Bay Brewing Company, Long Island's Gold Coast Brewery. That's right, folks. We want to thank our great sponsor, Oyster Bay Brewing Company, for sponsoring that segment, Questions Brewing. And we're just under three minutes to puck drop here, so we got to wrap things up. So I'm going to cue the music here. And I'm going to start thanking all you guys for coming out to the Long Island Marriott here in Uniondale. You guys ready for some Islander hockey? All right. That's what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. We want to thank everybody for coming out. We want to thank everybody for tuning in to twitch.tv slash hockey night NY. And, of course, our fantastic sponsors, starting with RJ Daniels American Bar and Grill, the best place to catch the aisles when you can't 
make it to the game. And of course, Blue Line Deli and Bagels located at 719 West Jericho Turnpike in Huntington, an official partner of the New York Islanders. A huge thanks to Thai Technology, a voice over IP company providing phone services for businesses across the country. And of course, of course, Oyster Bay Brewing Company located at 36 Oyster Bay, 36 Audrey Avenue in Oyster Bay. You can order their great beers and merchandise at OysterBayBrewing.com. You can get 15% off with coupon code H. N I N Y. Want to thank Drive for Five for hanging out with us tonight. Want to thank Isles Fanatics for coming out tonight. And of course, we're raising money for the Long Island Rough Riders sled hockey team. Check out their table over there for information on auctions, raffles. We've got some great autographed mini helmets here for auctions. So we're going to have some great stuff going on here in between periods. Once again, thank you everybody for coming out tonight. My name is Sean Cuthbert. With me has been Christian Arnold and the great Tony Stabile. We'll see y'all next week.